Okay, people. So today we're continuing with our Sci-Fi London coverage. And I have got the pleasure of being joined by Tish Arana. And we're talking about her new film. Now, I do believe it's your your directorial debut film it as is. well, The Burden. Tish, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, I mean, how could I not, right? Ah. When you make a film like The Burden, how can I not have you on the pod? <laughs> <laughs> like, Second. when I read the um, the director's statement, right, how this whole thing germalized, I was just like, yo, that there's some power in that, mm. right? Because a lot of times we hear things, we see things. Now, there's the people that head down, walk away. You know what I mean? The other people might mutter, mutter to themselves. Or, you know, when they get home, they tell their friend, oh, you know. But to take that and then create something that speaks to it, not a lot of people do that shit. So... What what was it about that situation that made you go, you know what, instead of just talking about it, let me create? Yeah, that's a, uh, honestly, uh, I was that person for many, many years. I mean, you know, I, I grew up in Texas, um, in the States, which mm. um, came with a lot of Southern racism. Um, you know, not quiet racism. I was called that word, um, you know, a few times and, you know, the KKK, you know, would mm. demonstrate in our, you know, in our square of our, our town. And so um, really scary times. And then, you know, I move out to Los Angeles for acting and LA and, and the larger cities in the States, they have this way of saying, you know, like, oh, we're so diverse and we have all these people. And it's like, you know, we're not, you know, we're yeah. liberal yeah. and you get all yeah. of this. But what you learn is while there's a lot of people, it just, they all kind of stick to themselves and they, and the way that the cultures come together, it's just, it's just a lot of appropriation mm. and you'll notice it very quickly that that is happening. And so, I mean, for years I was encountering, you know, lots of like young teenage kids that were not black using the word. Like I would be coming out of Target, <laughs> you know, with my, you know, toilet paper and, you know, you'd hear the word and I just mumble and, you know, go home and, ah, and something about this experience, I think it, it was because when I first started dating my husband and he took me back to, to New Jersey to meet his friends, they all sat me down one night and they were like, well, why can't we use the word? And I was like, don't be fooled by the glasses and the nerdiness. Like I will punch you in the throat. Like in college, I literally read and studied the history of this word and, mm. you know, would read um, court cases in the States of, you know, people being called that word and, you know, beating the crap out of people and getting off because they were able to prove that it was temporary insanity. Mm. That word carried that much power. And so, you know, I'm trying to talk to all of them and, you know, like, no, you can't, you just can't use the word and, and it's fine. And, you know, a few years go by, I get married. <laughs> And I'm sitting there on my couch and I'm, you know, on Instagram stories and I'm watching um, a lot of those guys, you know, at a party and someone in the background and it was all Filipino people. There was no black people at the party. <laughs> and I heard somebody scream the word and it was just all of those years. And then that conversation that I'd already had with those people mm. that just snapped and it was just the you know, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> yeah. I wrote that outline for the burden in 20 minutes. Like See. I had that much anger and just, yeah. Um, 
I'm like, just don't piss off writers. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the goal. Ever, I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> you get us angry enough. And yeah, um, I just really, I was sick of like, we tell people, but because of how anti-blackness works, people are like, you know, like when they say, well, you use it, why can't we? And I'm like, you're showing mm. racism. I'm like, you think so little of black people that when they tell you there's something that's just for them that no one else can have, they're like, well, who are you? And, and yeah. you know, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. this has um, brought up a lot of interesting conversations with people. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think it's one of those films that when you leave, yeah, people won't be having those conversations, yeah. right? You know yeah. what I mean? It's especially when it's like a mixed group. Yes. <laughs> be being and being like, yo, um, I'm okay to say it, right? I mean, right? Like, you know what I mean? You're <laughs> like, the yeah, don't, don't be that. <laughs> There's going to be that. Be like, I mean, I've only ever said it a couple of times. Yes. To be honest, like, but you know. I respect the code. Like yes, <laughs> everyone has a Sean Lee friend. Every actor that read this, um, they were like, "Oh, I know this guy." Like mm -hmm. my lead who played Sean, he was like, I, "I'm from the Bay. I, I know this guy very well." And then the the gentleman who played the judge number three, he was like, "Oh yeah, grew up with these guys." Yeah, and I'm like, they all. I feel like we've all had that one friend that was like, oh, it's all right if I use it. And mm -hmm. depending how comfortable you are or just how tired you are, you're like, whatever. I hope somebody else beat your butt, but it's not gonna be me today. Um, yeah. And I hope- I worked me. with um, a guy, right? So I, I was working at a cinema while at uni and one of the security guards, right? He thought he was very cool, right? Now, he, he thought he was so cool. On, I remember one day he called me and a friend down to the car park and he's like, yo, yo, look, look, look at this, look at this. And he, I'm, he's like, look at my car. I mean, look at his car. I'm like, yo, huh? And he's like, no, no, no. What, what are you saying in the car? So I have to get up close to read. And he's got foreplay on his car, <laughs> but he spelled it wrong. And I'm just like, yo, dude. <laughs> I'm just like, dude. Firstly, Having that in your car is weird, and you <laughs> spelled it wrong, Mark yeah. Parker. What is wrong with you, right? But this dude now, I remember we, we were upstairs, and he starts, like, you know, singing some Wu-Tang, and he was getting to a point, and he, and I could see he was going, and I was like, <laughs> stop. And he's just like, what? I'm like, he's just like, no, but you know, it's a so I'm like, don't give a fuck. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, but if I'm saying it as part of a so I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, what about if I'm like, nope. What about I'm like, yo, son, understand, never. Yes. You never say it. Right. And I'm yeah. saying, especially around me. Yes. Don't ever. Because if I hear you, I'm going to beat the fuck out. Of yes. You. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, well, I, I mean, I just thought this day said, and I'm just, I appreciate the mute. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You, you can don't appreciate say it. it without don't say it. violence. Uh, that, that, that was a thing, right? And, it, and it's just oh. like the amount of times. Yeah, like, and you have to have that, that, that conversation. It's like, why can't I say it? And I'm just yeah. like, why do you want to? Ooh. Right. This is the this is the one thing like no one can Ooh. ever give you that. Right. Yes. Why do you want to? Well, the reason I want to because of, you know, of, it, there's a big history and I want to. But I'm like, give me a where's the legitimate reason, the rationale to want to. Because when you look at the English lexicon and all the other words, mm -hmm. there's so many words. words. How about words. one of those words? Use one of those words. How about Ninja. that? Mm. Ninja, please. <laughs> so easy. It's so fun. <laughs> like, there's a um a comic book writer, um, Christopher Priest, 
He wrote Black Panther for Marvel, and he's written a lot at um, DC, and he had a comic book series at Acclaim Comics called Quantum and Woody. And in it, instead of saying the word, he would say noog noogie. I think it was like noogie. noogie. I like, like that. I mean, that, that's what it would he put in and like he's a black writer yeah. but he just didn't use it didn't use it and there's a lot of white comic book writers yes. who love to throw it out yes. there yes. love to throw it out it's like you know the comic that the that amazon series the boys yeah yeah the the writer of that if you ever read the comic version of The Boys, it's in The Boys. It's in The Boys. I had to stop. I, I tried it. I tried reading it, and then you come up and be like, yeah, yeah. it ruins it. It ruins it. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I loved, I loved Quentin Tarantino until he started getting into his, like, I really... I just really need to use this word phase and yeah. he finds a way to throw it in there every time. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not comfortable mm. with that. It ruins your art. Yeah. I remember watching um, Shaun of the Dead mm -hmm. and like everyone always throws Shaun of the Dead up as being this cult classic and this awesome film and I'm watching it and then you get to that point and they drop it, Art, and yeah. I'm just like, "What? Why, why the fuck? What? Yeah. There's no need for that word to be dropped in this scene. This film is full of white people. Like, why is this word being dropped? Are y'all well? I just <laughs> turned the film off. I did. I never finished that film. Yeah, yeah. It ruins yeah. things. Um, yeah. And everything that we're talking about is that was where I was stuck in the outline because I was like, we always get to hear and it doesn't matter how much we screen this, for some reason, they're not getting it. And I was yeah. like, I needed radical empathy. I was like, what is like the perfect revenge fantasy <laughs> where <laughs> they get it? Let's, let's, let's make sure they get it in all the ways. <laughs> oh yeah, God. yeah. That, no, I, you I want the I, burden. We'll give you the burden. Yeah, ah, <laughs> I hope the burden idea was was great too, and then be like, wait, so do I get to come back? Yeah, <laughs> and be like the burden never goes. <laughs> the original script, you know, we the cost was you know a factor in why it was a fifteen minute film, but the original script was nineteen pages, and it had Sean going back to Earth and being around his homies and a guy coming up to him and saying like, yo, Mike. And then, and he, and that's when he, you know, <laughs> kind of forgotten the budget, but I was like, I would love to show mm. how he thinks this will all go down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, I, one thing I was wondering, right. Was the impetus for um, everyone, you know, flying off. Mm. Right. Was that in part like brought on from the migration to Liberia? Wow, I have never put that together before. Um, that's a brilliant take on it. I wish I could say it was. Um, just say it was. Just, just be like, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad it you. Was, saw it was that. actually <laughs> partly on Brexit. Brexit was happening around the same time as Black Panther. And so there was this chatter online about, you know, like, okay, we're gonna have a Blacksit. Who gets to come to Wakanda? Mm. And so I'd always had that, like, you know, if we had our own place, who would be allowed in there? Kanye out. You know, like we had these kind of, you know, things happening and jokes flying about who we would let, you know, come to the cookout basically. Um, mm. But I, I do enjoy the exodus to Liberia. That's that's a good. Point. Yeah, because that that's something that really jumped to my mind when I watched this. You know, yeah. yeah. And, but when you're thinking about the people that couldn't get in, now isn't that fun? Don't like policing 
now this is a, this is my thing, right? Because I think the Obamas are great, mm-hmm. right? I, I I remember Michelle Obama came to the South Bank Center and did a talk, and I was able to get a ticket. Me and my friend we went, and it was electrifying, right? You left feeling so energized, yes, right? I thought that was incredible, but. Got a bit of an irritation with the Obamas. Yes. Because, right, while he was running, Hillary was one of the people that were like, show me a passport. Yes. His passport. Yes. Right? She was one of them. Yes. And then they endorse her? Yes. I'm like, why the fuck are you endorsing this yes. woman that yes. was straight racist? Yes. Yes. And whenever that, and it irritates that. me because whenever they, they, you know, interviews, right? There's, the South Bank had Hillary over with her daughter to talk about her bullshit book, right? And I guarantee that question was not asked, Oof. right? And so you know, I bet me. that question has never been asked to the Obamas, no. and no. I want to know the answer. I want to know why would you endorse someone that was straight up racist because that's not the qualities that you would want in a leader so having this utopian society like thinking about it because i know you've already you're thinking about that like how did they create this um a place that's free of racism um colorism classism Mm. Transphobia, homophobia. Um, there's that, there's a lot of people that would not make the cut. No, they would not. That wouldn't make the cut because, yeah. right, colorism. When you think about oh. colorism, you know what I mean? And how many times have you seen a picture of Beyonce where she looks kind of white, right? And you're just like, wait, is that Beyonce? Yes. And yeah. you're like, wait, that's Beyonce? And she, she's like, Beyonce ain't that light. Like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Or other, just other people, and they'll lighten up. Yes. And then you get these incredible, like, darker actresses and models and singers, and they don't get covers, right? They yeah. don't get the same love. So we know colorism is a thing. And it's even a thing to the extent of, and it's so sad that so many women are using these bleaching yes. agents and things such as that. Yes. I mean, Michael Jackson, it wasn't a skin condition. Uh, Let's be real. It no. wasn't a skin condition. No, it was not. You know? so. That's definitely a huge problem. We know it's a problem in so many other cultures, in Indian culture, the whole caste system yes. is like yes. colorism and, it, you know, it's it, it, all over the spot, right? So it it's, yeah, there, there are all of these things that we have to consider. I mean, even me being in it, because I was like, I want, first of all, I needed a dark skinned trans woman as one of the judges, because I'm like, if we have a utopian society, then the marginalized of the marginalized have to be in a position of power. And then I had, you know, a film mentor that was like, um, you know, if this were a longer film, you would have to explain how you got in. And I was like, oh, <laughs> burn. But yes, like, because I mean, that would, you have to like, get into the colorism. And like, mm-hmm. I did not, you know, like me, acting in it um everyone asked why i wasn't a tribunal judge and i was like i'm not in a i don't need to be in a position of power in this and being a scientist is kick ass that as well (laughs) but yes like these things if we're going to talk utopia we have to like talk about the ugly parts of the culture Mm, mm. what would really create peace um and that's why i love sci-fi because i got to just and it happened i didn't have to (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I didn't have to explain how we got there, but oh, how I would love to. I'm sure you've got some some ideas. How we ah, there. I mean, there's always ideas, right? Now, there was two like when you were talking about the people that did get in, 
there were two names I was not sure about. Oh, okay. Sure. Let's talk about it. Because okay. I wrote this in 2019. And ever since then, I'm like, is there a curse <laughs> on the people? Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Because now Serena's husband didn't do what he, it was later. Because I feel now. I don't, know, I know nothing about the dude. It looks like he's a great husband and father and all of that jazz. But his rationale for quitting his job was asinine. Yes. It was ridiculous because if you want to influence change, stay in your fucking position and yes. do it from there. Yes, because there was no like, change. Because you, what you quit and then what? You have no influence who gets the next role. No. You have no influence on then how they do things because you're no longer there. Why do that shit? I'm like, it made no sense. And I, I think I read it something like, I'm going to show my daughter that I was believe. I'm like, wait, you show your daughter that you walked away? Yeah. That you didn't actually hold two beliefs? I just thought it was dumb. I thought it was dumb. So you're I was the just first like, person to challenge me on this. And I'm like, because inward, like my producer, every time something comes out, she's like, oh, and I'm like, it's <laughs> the curse, it's the curse. But I love that we're, let's have these real conversations about that, that didn't work. As soon as he did that, I was like, <laughs> and I think everyone was like, huh? Yeah, it, it just made no sense. It uh, made no sense. No, hit me with the next one. Because I know you're going to say, yeah. <laughs> Harry. I'm like, he dressed up as a Nazi. Yeah. Right? He dressed up as a Nazi for one. The second thing, it's just like, when there's that whole, oh, yeah, and when I brought her around the family, they were all super weird. I'm like, firstly, right, you you know what your family is, motherfucker. You yeah. know that we're inbred. So what? Surely, like when you're bringing someone into a situation, you think this could be. You before you go, you be like, yo, listen, we're not gonna stay for long. You know, yes. we're just gonna do this thing, but they're fucked up, right? So we're going in and then we're leaving. All right? Protect don't pay you. any mind to any of their foolishness. But it can't I don't know if they had that conversation. She's a moron for not thinking what they yeah. would be like. I don't even understand that research. Whole research. You know what I mean? Like you know you know they're inbred. The brain. Right? You, you know they're inbred. You know they're fucked up. Right? You know they're racist. Philip's been racist, but I mean, he was racist yes. for like the Wasn't longest. Wasn't his sister like married to like a head Nazi and they fled? There was something. There was I, something. Again, yeah, it's yeah. all so cold. The crown has, I mean, I, I knew stuff, but then the crown came out and I was like, oh, God, mm. dang it. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, the, your crown's definitely watered down and all the shit. More. But, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, There's look, they run in the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is just it's fucked up, man. Commonwealth's yeah. fucked up. Like, and, and people being like, oh, the Commonwealth Games might not continue. I'm like, Commonwealth Games isn't a representation of anything no. good. Yeah. It's a representation of the countries they used to run Rich. and, you know what I mean, steal resources from and have slaves and all of this shit. Mm. It's not a good thing, right? And the, then you, you're doing all of this stuff, but you're not giving back to any of these countries, mm -hmm. right? So the royal family doesn't stand for anything good on that front, right? So if you're trying to tell me that they're not throwing around the word behind closed doors, <laughs> you know what I mean? Woo! You know what I mean? Be like, oh, Philip, <laughs> we'll have to go and speak to some of them tomorrow. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm sure that shit was, the, was thrown around. So, like, Harry wearing the Nazi uniform one, right? Then the fact that they leave the country, right? Because they're like, oh, it's so I'm bad. Like Alex. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's so, shut the fuck up. You don't, you don't know how, what's bad. Yeah. You ain't 
face that shit, yeah. right? And you're in a position where you could influence change. And again, people that could influence change don't do shit. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't have Harry there. I love this. There's more. <laughs> so you, I, I forgot that I had Harry in there, but there's some, I mean, like my queen, like, you know, he calls her the queen in it. Um, Ali Wong, her, like, I love her to pieces. And then Beef, I don't know if you've heard about her show Beef, and she was one of the executive producers. And they hired an actor that had gone on podcasts and joked about raping Black women. And that was all coming out, and they wanted a statement from her and the cast that had been responsible for bringing this man who was very vocal about this and she said nothing she refused to give a statement and i was like ah oh the burden curse oh no i did not hear that one yeah yeah yo so i mean hmm. <laughs> We would have to, if, if the burden became a series, we would have to talk about, like, did you get in? And then are there things that could get you revoked? Yes. They gotta, they gotta, <laughs> gotta keep that utopia going. I'm like, who would actually get to stay? Uh, I mean, the more our election goes on, and I don't know if you're following it, it's, it's, just chaos, but I mean, even Alexi AOC, one of our politicians, I'm oh, like, stop, stop. She, you're doing she, it. She cannot. AOC yeah. is an idiot. AOC yeah. cannot well, get. She's a politician, opportunistic. I'm like, yeah. you're the kitchen. The the progressive is leaving your body. It's <laughs> mm -hmm. it's running away. Um, yeah, like who would? Who could? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, really I don't think pain. any politician gets through. No. Because that's the thing, right? Like, how many, I think only when you look at it, Bernie Sanders and RFK seem to be the only two who have kind of stuck with what they've always said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, like, yeah. everyone else, like, even... Jimmy Barrett Carter even had a was moment. with like against gay marriage and then he changed. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? So everyone is flip flopping mm -hmm. dependent on how yes. they perceive that, you know what I mean? Everyone's minds are going, right? Where, where are the people that are like, no, this is where I stand. I'm going to give a fuck what you say. Yeah. I'm going to stand yeah. by these views. And there's not many people that do that. So yeah, I don't. They don't make it very far if they, mm. it's, it, at least in our country, in my country, um, they'll they'll run you out and you'll have to go live in Cuba like a sata, <laughs> 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 or in a bajel like Mumia. So you know, I'm like, hmm. yeah, they don't. That's why they have to get out. <laughs> and I mean, the fact you know, like I I didn't say her name, but you know, if you think about who are our black billionaires. I don't think Oprah would no. be one of the ones that would nope. be saying like, yes, I will help you build a ship and, and we can all go there. I don't think she would want to go there, which is sad because she, I call her queen, queen yeah. mother, but yeah, not even yeah. Oprah could get down with the Octavia Butler for going to Mars. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Who would go? If you had to name people that were well known, who would go that were not black? Mm -hmm. If anyone, I really like Felicia Pride. Ooh, I really like Felicia Pride. I'd say, I'd, I'd say Felicia Pride goes. I would say that. Um, oh my God, I keep I forget her name, and it's so bad because I love her films. Um, love and basketball. Gina Prince by yes. Wood. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Man. Yeah. Gina yes. goes. Yes. Gina of goes. course. I I don't know if you watched her on Project Greenlight. 
um, on no, HBO Max, whatever yeah. it is. Okay. It, you're not missing much, but <laughs> her mentorship and what she was able to say about um, growing up the way she did and the kinds of films that she likes to make and just her process with creating art and what she wants her stories to be, um, you would you would then say like, yes, of course she will. She mm. will yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I definitely think those two. Okay. Those two got two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, one more. Uh, who else? Right. Who else? There is a young politician. I know, I know you said no politicians. There's a young guy out of Tennessee, um, and he's making headway. Um, he was fired for like leading a George Floyd you know, sit in at the Capitol in Tennessee. And I've been following him, but he was also at the DNC. And so I'm like, eh. uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I feel like our, our political monster machine does something. I was, I was programmed for that as a kid. Like they, they take the good students in the United States and they put them through girl stay. And then they have this other program where they take you to the Capitol and you stay for a week. And, and it's like all of these leaders from around the United States. And we got to sit on the Senate floor. And I remember them asking like, do you, do you want to be a Senator when you get older? And I was like, Oh no, I'm not doing politics. And it was like, I sucked out the air from this whole place. And they were like, well, why? And I was like, politicians lie. And they were like, like, oh, get the mic away from her. And I was like, you got to have that one. I'm that one. I mean, that's fire, right? That's fire that you that's said that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've always thought I, I wouldn't mind, but only to try and put things into balance. Yeah. Right, because I don't understand how these people can say shit yeah. and never follow anything up. Right now, in in work, right? If you did that, you're sat. They'd be like, oh. "Wait, you said that this um, project would be finished in you know by this date, and we're not finished, and you're well over budget." Yeah, this doesn't fly. You're yeah. out of here, yeah. right? You, you just, but they just seem to get promoted. And yeah. it's just like, how is how is this happening? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like to, to go in and then just shake it all up. Yeah. Though, you know what I mean? I, I feel I'd then be sacked straight away. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, we don't want this person. Oh. Who, who is this guy doing this shit? I mean, the system was built. <laughs> deliberately for those people to win and they're like oh, they can talk a good game to keep us you know just compliant yeah. mm -hmm. a little comfortable <laughs> <laughs> just enough that you know we can get up the next day and go back to work and mm. yeah. yeah oh you know what james samuels i don't know james he directed Harder They Fall and The Book of Clarence. Oh, the Western, right? Yes. That was his first everything. Yes. Okay. Which was where, yeah, when you're like, there's, there's people when you go look at, that's your, f what? Yes. Oh. How? I had this conversation with some filmmakers. Oh, my friends. days. Because it's like, look, when you break that film down, the, the story itself is just incredible. Right, the casting was yes. just oh my days. The casting was fantastic. Oh. The music, the score, yes. the soundtrack was so sublime. How did he get it all right? Yeah, but then the way he married it up, right? Like one scene I always reference, right? It, it's when they're in the bar and um, oh, I forget who it is. She's 
the beating the base, the stock of the the rifle on the floor, and it's beating in time with the bass, and then it gets into the dance, and it's just it's just the way the music becomes another Mm. actor essentially. Ooh, you get me a chill. <laughs> but it, it's just like he did it with that. And then you think, yo, is there going to be the sophomore curse? Yeah. And nope. then the book of Clarence was just incredible. Just incredible. That's really hard to do. I mean, I feel like the film industry is a lot like politics where you get in there and you're very idealistic and you have like this very like clear direct message that you want to tell in your storytelling Mm. and then Hollywood and all the money comes along and says, well, if we're going to fund it, you have to do a, B and C Mm -hmm. and it, it just waters down, but that isn't happening with him. No, no. Because yeah, that, that's the thing. Like after uh, Harder They Fall, then like the Book of Clarence, and then you know, what I mean, that whole idea, and yeah, Jesus is gonna be black, and then the studio being like, James, <laughs> James, James. <laughs> now nah, we, we look, we loved Harder Day, we loved it, we loved it, mate. But um, got a bit of a problem. Yeah, you want to make JC, uh, <laughs> make JC black? <laughs> oh, that's so funny, James. Um, because it. that's not. He was never black, James. He wasn't black. So we need to change that. Otherwise, we can't finance this, you know? Yes, we know he was born in Jerusalem. We know it's a very hot country, but we still believe Jesus was lily white. And he had hair like a wool, but, you know, big loose curls can. Yeah. 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 That's what that really meant. <laughs> so when they when they did that bit with Ben with um oh, Benedict Cumberbatch, mm-hmm. Benedict Cumberbatch, that's his name, isn't it? Yep. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, when when they did the bit with him, that was so funny. That was so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, no, James Samuels will be going. Yeah. yeah, I like I like who's it who's on. Sankofa right now. You're doing good. <laughs> You're doing really good. Now I gotta I gotta start watching people. I mean my grandmother. I put my grandmother in the in the end who has passed, but she definitely would have. Ah, that's nice. Yeah. She that's cool. nice. <laughs> she got it. These are good uh, questions. I yeah. used to tell the the actors in the montage scene and i'm like that you know like when mm. you're publicizing this do not use the hashtag i got in because <laughs> y'all didn't get in <laughs> <laughs> with the exception maybe of the japanese <laughs> actress i told her and i was like you would have been a maybe there would have been more explanation needed because mm. all of these stories, everything, every scenario in here is either something I experienced or someone I know experienced. Um, and I had a friend that lived in Japan and he had locks. And so everyone would approach him with, hey, my nigga. And he'd be like, what is happening mm. right now? It was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I think that's the thing, though, because you recognize all the scenarios that mm-hmm. get mentioned. Mm-hmm. All of them. Like, you're just like, oh, my God. I Very have sad. lived through all of this. Yes. I've lived through all of this shit. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the thing that kind of makes it hit home so much because you recognize it all, right? You've heard it. You've seen it, mm-hmm. right? You You know the consequences of all of this stuff. So it just makes it so hard hitting as a film, but it's still legitimately funny. That's the thing. It's just like being able to frame it in a way where it's very poignant, but also legitimately funny. That is a balancing act that a lot of people just can't seem to nail all the time. 
um, I will be honest and say um, that's my coping mechanism because <laughs> I have to laugh through the pain. Um, I feel mm. like you can't really make it here um, as, you know, someone that, you know, I, I think of James Baldwin a lot. And I'm like, to, to live here is to be in rage every day. And if you can't laugh, you will literally go insane. Yeah. Um, so it is a compliment that, because a lot of people, you know, keep saying like, I felt that you were directly talking to me and slapping me without shame. So I was able to get through it, do the work I needed to do to see myself in, you know, this man's buffoonery and like, get it. And I'm like, okay, a spoonful of sugar. Sometimes it can work. <laughs> so. Mm. Like this, this was the first written thing as yeah. well, right? So how hard was it to, you know what I mean? Like be able to fine tune that first draft to be able to find that balance. Mm. So the, because it was my first, you know, uh, thing I had ever written um, script wise, uh, I wrote it a lot like a book. Uh, my first draft had monologues that were literally, <laughs> <laughs> and my producer was like, okay, so let's, let's get this into, you know, like something that could actually be made because she writes um, on a television show. And so she was like, let's, right, right. Let's, like, and so I will, you know, when people tell you, you know, you've either got it or you don't. And I'm like, no, even the people that got it, like if they're lying and saying they only have like, you know, less than five drafts, then like run mm. from those. I mean, there had to have at least been 15 or so drafts. As I wrote it in 2019. Um, and so there were so many iterations of how to write in ways that sounded how people would actually speak. Cause you know, I got up on my high horse. I just wanted to say what I needed to say. And so there was yeah. that draft and then, um, you know, just different evolutions of punishment <laughs> <laughs> that I, you know, wanted to inflict on this man. Um, and then, you know, my producer coming in and saying like, we got to get this down. It's got to be this many minutes. Like you got to be able to afford to make this sci-fi is very expensive. Um, so yeah, I will say it was never painful. Like I really did enjoy every, and I, I, I still have a box with all of the original scripts. So, you know, like the, the narratives that, um, the holograms, you know, yeah. they have their own monologues. There used to be four. And okay. so, um, and one of them was my story, like of how I was, you know, called the word when I was a little girl. And so, um, that all got cut and i'm like yeah we just keep it we keep it for if there's a series or a movie mm. or... <laughs> yeah no why not right mm. i feel you like know, a special edition version yes when it when it hits that close like when it like hits that part of your heart and just really gets to the core of like something that just brings you so much pain i i feel like that's when it, the best writing happens you know, if, if somebody's just telling me, like, I need you to write me a story about a puppy, um, it's I will rack my brain and sit there for days just staring at a blank page. But when you're pissed or just heartbroken over something, I don't know, at least for me, the words just. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's yeah. I don't know what it is about those emotions, but being yeah. able to capture those like yeah it just seems to pour out which is uh always an interesting one mm -hmm. always very yeah very odd <laughs> but yeah no i think you did nail it right and the way everyone talked it felt real it felt natural i think that's a big thing because sometimes you'll watch something and you just be like oh, people don't, don't talk like this like what is that no one interacts like you don't buy the chemistry you don't buy the relationship so it's always weird or you don't buy the sincerity mm -hmm. and i mean that was the big thing right like of of these characters you bought you know their their reactions 
two things. You know, you bought um, Faye Kato, you know, in her rendition of Kaiko, right? Yes. Like, that was like the whole thing is just like, I, oh, I thought that's, I watched the film. So that's, I thought that's what, and you'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah. So you buy that, right? You And then with Sean, it, it you know, just, you, you've met that person. Mm -hmm. So you just bought it all and he, him trying to get in and be like, yo, but, you know, it's just like, nah, son, it's just more. And then he's just like, oh, yeah, I know that person. Yeah. Know yeah. Person. He fought it, too. Even though he knew that person, he was struggling with, like, you know, I don't want to just give this one note. I need to give this man. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't need to give this man humanity. No. Like, <laughs> not in this. I was like, you really have to nail daftness. I need you to to go for it. And whenever he would try to do that thing, he tried to get in a monologue where he was showing it. And I was like, cut, no. And like, and we go back because, yeah, I really, I'm like, everyone, you know, considers him to, like he's the protagonist and I'm like he is not the three judges this is us this is a movie for us this is mm. the audience is the protagonist <laughs> like <laughs> we're the ones experiencing this and like it's our voices coming through the judges saying enough yeah um, so yeah it's like you don't get to be three dimensional <laughs> <laughs> give me ass <laughs> <laughs> Be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, where did the confidence come to be able to direct this? Oh, my gosh. So when I first started this journey, I was never intending to direct it. Um, you know, we uh, interviewed, like, a bunch of amazing directors that had done sci-fi um, and, you know, we found one person that we had attached to it for a few months, but every time she would like bring up her, like, you know, her lookbook and her thoughts for the film and her vision, it was always dystopian. And I was like, she doesn't, she wanted to be in the desert in LA, you know, in the summertime right, shooting. Right, and right. I was like, what are you doing? And, you know, just, she saw like barren landscapes and rocks. And I was like, this is not how black people alchemy this is not what we do when we're given scraps like we make kingdoms like we we do the most so um she was out and then we brought in somebody else um and i was planning on shadowing because you know i've been on the the actor side since mm. you know moving out to la 20 years ago and then doing acting back in my home state and i would just sit there you know all the other actors would you know go back you know do their thing and i'd just be sitting there watching you know these people like interacting especially if i had a woman director you know how her crew was treating her or talking to her um when i had crappy i mean sometimes i would work with award-winning oscar nominated directors that would just just miss it just mm not the the nicest or the funnest to work with um and i was just always taking notes and so i just thought i needed this one like shadow you know project and then maybe my next one i could do it yeah and then she had to bail like right before we started crowdfunding she had to drop out of the project for personal reasons and i was freaking out and i brought all my production heads together i was like I don't know what to do. We have two weeks until we're about to start, you know, crowdfunding and we don't have a director. And um, my producer was the first to say like, you can do it. And then my DP was, you know, saying, she's like, your script is so clear and you write like a director, which everyone always used to like get upset with me for. They're like, you can't do all of this. Like, this is a director's job. Like they're the ones that get to come in here and, and I'd be like, well, I don't know how else to write. Like I see it. It should be like this. And so they were like, you can do this. And so I had an amazing assistant director who has directed her own films. And she was like, I got you. And when you're, you know, doing your parts, I got you. And so there was just, I have never been on a set and 
like that whole team afterwards, like we're still all good friends. We still all talk, you know, we, you know, we're on social media together. Like, you know, whenever they see, you know, people using the N word and getting in trouble and, you know, they send me the videos and ah. <laughs> and it was just so collaborative and there was no ego and everyone knew that this was my first, but it was something that needed to, it didn't need to be a first pancake. This had to yeah. land. We had to do a really good job with this. And I mean, my cinematographer, she was on Obi-Wan Kenobi. So oh, she, she does amazing. I, I still don't know how this day, how she saw the um, like in search of that my producer put out there. And then she was, you know, just gung ho from the beginning. Like, yep, I want to do this. Let's go. So she hit you up. Yes. Well, my producer and was like, yeah. yep, I, I, I went. And so we got her on Zoom um, and I knew immediately. I, I, I think I, within five minutes of talking to her, I was like, it's her. And my producer was like, you can't make a decision. We still have other people you have to talk. And I'm like, it's going to be her. I love <laughs> Khalila. I'm like, if Khalila will work with me from here on out, she can't get rid of me. I'm like, <laughs> unless you're working, unless she's on a different project that, and I just, it's going to take her two years. And so I have to, you somebody else. that's the only way because she's amazing she's really good i like her uh, watch the work that is i think it is so great and also important that you've been able to make those connections mm -hmm. is when you look at so many famous directors Right, people like Linklater, Abrahams, Wheaton, you know, Nolan, Spielberg, how like just you know, Spike, so many people, they'll have this crew of talent that has gone with them from film to film yeah, to film, to film. Right. And you know, I mean, it, it's how you succeed by having that core group that helps you, supports you, your scaffolding. Yes. Right? So being able to find that straight away, that's incredible. I talk about this a lot. I, it does, it does not escape me. I've had so many filmmaking friends that have said that they've had hell crews, people walking off, terrible things happening. And I just sit mm. there like, oh, and so I, I truly am. I am grateful and I will never, I think that's where people mess up when they take credit and say it's because of them. It is mm. not like you get lucky. And if you are a decent human being, you see that everybody on your set is comfortable, that they feel safe, especially I mean, like when you're sharing art and you're going to those vulnerable places, it's very important um, to not have that kind of hostility and ego. And it just, it I mean, we were in and out every day, 12 hours, like from, like, it was like a well-oiled machine, just like going through. <laughs> I, I, I hope I, I knock on wood a lot um, that I get that every time. I want, I want those kind of sets. And I am hearing that that is the new wave in Hollywood that there are more mm. and more directors that are done with that toxic BS that, you know, we hear about all the time. Um, it does seem like that, that people are moving away from that weird mentality, which never made any sort of sense. It was, it was always so bizarre, you know what I mean? Like that weird cult. It's like that whole thing of, well, I was hit as a as a kid, so I'm gonna hit you. You know yes. what I mean? And it'd be like, wait, so you know, you know how fucked up it was. Yes. So don't you go, it stops here. Yeah. And I'm gonna do shit differently. Yes. Like, don't you wanna do that? Right? Because that's the that's always been my approach to management. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Being like, yo, I've I know what it's like to be managed in a horrible way. Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing that shit. No. Right. If you've got questions, you can come talk to me. Right. If you, uh, you know what I mean? You've got ideas. Come talk to me. Yeah. Right. We can work this shit out. Right. What what are your um 
What are your thoughts? What are, what are the things you're not comfortable with? Let me know. And we'll work on those to make them your strengths. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I w w always try and approach things, right? Not to be like, Tish, you were terrible yes. at this. Why did you do this? I want to see your face here. Like, that's some bullshit. That energy, you're going to, nothing you can, like, you can't create from that environment. Like, mm. or what you create is, it's bad. It's rare that you yeah. get a very toxic situation that ends up not somehow like making its way. I mean, like you see writer's rooms and you know, you get like a beautiful season of television and then you find out that like everyone was, you know, treated terribly and it comes out and mm. those people are allowed to, you know, speak and they learn that that's not the norm. And then you see what it does to the room after that, like yeah. I mean, the TV show is, is cra it's like, it, it can, it not, it's not sustainable. No, no, oh, especially it's not. with actors. We're sensitive. We're very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, but I don't understand. Like it, it's, um, oh, was Rebecca Ferguson came out was, I think it was last year and said that there was an incident with an actor, but she didn't yes. want to name the actor. Yes. And I was just like, name them, name the person. Yes. Right. Because not naming the person is putting other people in vulnerable in situations. And, I, and when you don't name the monster, then that cycle of abuse continues because no one else has said anything. So you think it's just you and you mm. keep the shame and you don't talk. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. It, it baffles me. Not gonna get sued, like being the person, yeah. Name because I'm happy to say anyone's name that's a dick, yep, right? Because I'm like, what are you gonna do? Yep, <laughs> like you know, what I mean? you right, how are you gonna deny your dickheadness, right? Yeah. Like, you can't, you're a fool, right? Like, all the companies that are being racist as fuck, you know, what I'm saying it's just like. You know what I mean? People talk about Jordan's um, Hall of Fame speech and just being like, ah, I mean, it's kind of bitter. I think it's fire. Yes. I think it's fire because Honest. why shouldn't those people be called out? If a teacher is telling you you're not going to be shit, how dare that person? Why are we protecting them? Yeah. Fuck those people. Yes. Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah, I'm just like, yo, this as soon as I've got a platform, yeah, I would air out. Actually, uh, you know, I'll never get a platform now. <laughs> <laughs> but you will because it's changing. And you know, it's when I was when I decided, like, okay, we're gonna start like pulling our crew together. My producer and I, I was like, you give me names, and before we reached out to them, I would go to their social media and start like researching. And I would look for problematic anything. I was, mm, I mean, mm. if, if there's anything on you, if there's any tea, I don't, I'm like, nope, you're out. Like you, you can't, I'm like, this is, this needs to be good from the inside out. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, just for all of the reasons I was like, this needs to be a very safe set um, for, for all of my people to be here. And yep, air them out because there are people that are making sure that their sets don't look like beef set. Like you don't want to find out afterwards that you have this like horrible monster working on set because it, it ruins the, I mean, like you can have a Jonathan Majors, you know, and it's like, no one wants to see his work. And there's a whole bunch of other people that, you know, it's their work too, that they don't get, you know, to have that because this one person just ruined it for everyone. And so I'm like, keep saying their names because yeah. I don't want to be surprised. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, because that, um, uh, I think magazine dreams, I think it, that the project was that he, about him being the body. Ooh. Everyone was talking about that being an Oscar yep. winning film and it's sensational. I don't even know if it's ever coming out now. 
I don't right? think it is. And that's the thing. All the people that work yes. on that. Like you just feel it's when you know DC canceled Batgirl. That hurt. Batgirl? Batwoman. Yes, Batwoman. Oh. Yeah. Because I'm just like all the people that put their heart and soul into that. And the thing being, right, you had to turn down projects to be in that project. Yes, you did. Right. You and not getting paid. Yeah. And when they look at your CV and go, yo, what were you doing for the last few years? And be like, oh, I made um this film. And they're like, oh, where is it? I can't find yeah. it. I, it didn't come out. Like, did you actually make a film? Yeah. You, like, what the fuck were you doing? You know what I mean? It, it's just... Yes, you, you could say whatever, and people are just gonna be like, mm, I see no evidence. Yes, right. Yes. And, and so it's that, right? When these things get I heard um Netflix were had shut shuttered a Halle Berry film. <gasps> Whoa, right? Mothership, I think it was called, right? For for, for some sort of financial write-off, and it's just like man like and it doesn't hurt her right necessarily i mean obviously she put a lot of time and effort into yeah. it but she's good but all the other people that don't have her name recognition don't have her experience it fucks them man. they don't i mean like they'll probably get like a shooting rate but i mean it's it's gas mm. money compared to most actors get paid once it starts residuals yeah um is where the you know livable income comes so mm. yeah that when batwoman was canceled that was the beginning where there was just this like cold icy thread moving through all of my conversations with all of my actor friends like oh like there's something like bad coming yeah if this can happen yeah yeah no. no, good. None of that. Good. No. <laughs> and no. for the record, the first time you, as a filmmaker, see your project, the first you know cut that the editor gives you, not going to have a colorist, mm. not going to have music, it's not going to have the special effects. Um, it's going to be a rough cut. And the fact that no one told this man to like prepare for that um like everyone prepared me they're like okay you're gonna see this you're gonna be scared you're gonna think like <laughs> what and i loved it <laughs> because i was prepared i was like no yeah. this is great i can still you know like once we get the magic in there this is gonna be amazing ah uh, that's why he cut it that exec yeah. he was like oh it looks terrible I'm like yeah dude uh, still hurts me but it's just, you know, it is funny because you talk to people in the industry and you're just like, do you actually know film? Mm -hmm. like, uh, like, well, what do you know? Yeah. Because the way you talk, like, it feels like you don't really know shit. You're going off what's buzzing at the moment yes. on TikTok. That is mm -hmm. that some people are, are, are running shit. It's scary. Mm. It is bizarre. We'll it see what we get from. There was something my husband was just saying that some either YouTuber or TikTok, like there's like this wave, like there's a movie coming out that's going to have a YouTube person in it. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, what? Like I couldn't even like hear the conversation. Oh, I mean, there's been a few, right? Oh. I get sent films all the time, and I, there was a. There's been a few that have been like, and it's. Like, uh, you know, the cast and be like, where it's always list their credits. And it's just like, you know, they got 50 million followers on, you know, TikTok. And, you know, they're, and you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ, what are we doing? And then you watch it and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can see that these people aren't actors. Yeah. But for whatever reason, you're, you're not meant to say that the acting sucks. Isn't that <laughs> bizarre? There you know, is like, yeah, the emperor is wearing lovely clothes. Yes. I really dig it. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Just there is there's a reason that 
most of the actors that we love, if you go to their Instagram pages, you don't love them anymore. Like you think they're boring, uh, you know, like they don't know how to get, and I'm like, because they're actors, like they're good at taking clever words and making yeah. them come a lot. Like there is, they're, they're not the same. TikTok stars, like wh however, I mean, like I don't have a huge following. Like I'm impressed by the, you know, you have 50 million eyeballs or I guess a hundred million eyeballs, like looking at you. Um, that's cool, but it's not our. Yeah. But the thing being, because I don't know if you get it on your Instagram, right? But I get hit up all the time of like, oh, do you want to buy followers, right? It's just like, um, oh, for this amount, you can have 10,000 we'll followers. This amount, you can have this many followers. And it's just like, get the block, right? Yeah. But you get sent these messages. And I, there's certain accounts that I'm like, I know you bought your followers. Yes, yes. I know you, you can tell. <laughs> I, I mean, there are some actors that I know that have had to do that. I mean, like when I'll see, well, I used to uh, see, you know, b breakdowns where they would like say, like, we need to know all of your social media and oh. how many followers you have. Because yeah. that is sadly like a part of how they're building. It doesn't translate. I have no. I have friends that are actors that have. 70,000 followers and they still make a short and you know maybe three yeah. people come no biz and that's the thing right biz like my day job is marketing and communications right and you know a lot, i think paid advertising is bullshit yeah it doesn't mean anything right yeah. they used to want you to track the likes you get on things and it's just like you understand that people will scroll through and just like pum, 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 yes. pum, without actually digesting information, yes. right? So just because you liked it, doesn't mean you're gonna go out and buy it, go watch mm -hmm. it, go, mm -hmm. you know, interact with this thing, you know? But they, they think, oh, you know, if this person endorses it, that means they're going to, no, because Taylor Swift might endorse it, but then, the next week she'll do something else and they'll jump exactly. to that. Exactly. Like loyal. No. People aren't loyal who are just following this next big thing. Yes. Right. It, it, the way you get people is creating stories. Yes. Right. Giving them that thing that's just like, oh, this is so interesting. It's, it's the reason for this podcast, right? It's the reason to have these conversations. Now, people are going to listen to this, I hope. They're going to listen to this, and they're going to go, yo, Tish is so insightful. Man, I love the way she just talked about how this came together. I love the way she talked about that. And that's going to go, I want to go watch The Burden now, right? That's the thing that draws people, not having you know what i mean like yes. some famous person go i like the burden you know what i mean like the, that doesn't work for the most part you know what i mean maybe if beyonce came out and was just like oh, i love the burden but yeah that might do something sometimes but, yeah. i mean i'm still trying to i'm studying uh the beyonce effect because i'm st i mean even like she's got to lick her out and people are like, girl, and I'm like, oh, so not even Beyonce can make like certain things fly. And like, mm. There's a magic formula that I don't think we've figured out why certain things will get us to stop and pause and yeah. think about it. Um, the greatest compliment I got was when somebody said, I'm still thinking about your film. Mm. And it's been months later, like it's still in my head. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. But I, th I think still. that's what something like this does. It makes you think about things, right? I was, I watched another film um, showing at Sci-Fi London, a positive contribution. And it's from, oh God, gonna write it. Heather McCauld. McQuaid wrote it 
and Nuri Mosinenko directed it, right? And it's about um, kind of the government takes your bad, me like takes bad memories. Like, so if you've done a crime, right, you get a choice of going to prison or be re simulated as it were so they'll scorch your memory of bad intentions bad memories and then implant good memories oh. to, and they think then you'll be a good person right but it's that whole thing of the memories actually induce your behavior yeah right and background because there's people yes who have had a bad upbringing and might do bad things but then there's other people that have had a bad upbringing and are like i will never want to be that yeah. and become incredible and there's people that have had the best upbringing and are pieces of shit, right so it's just like hmm right so it kind of is making you think right it Ooh, makes you think. And I, think, I like this yeah it, it, it's those kind of films which just sit with you and you're just like, yo, what would I do in that situation? What would I do in that scenario? And I think that's why the burden is like so powerful, you know, and important as a film because it does those things, you know what I mean? The beauty of sci-fi. I don't know any other genre that really just allows people to take a complex thought and simplify it to this pure form and then just blow it up. Mm. So I love sci-fi for that. Yeah. I just watched a, a friend's sci-fi project last night where he was talking about student loans. And oh. if you don't pay your student loans, they will come in and take the knowledge that you learn during those periods oh. How dope is that? I was like, ooh, this is good. Ooh. Yes. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. I want to see that one. Yeah. I, I want to see that. You. Ah, yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Yes, student loans are crazy, right? It's the, the one thing, if you file bankruptcy, it don't matter. You still owe that money. <laughs> Just take my knowledge, take it. But yeah. then there's the question: um, Did you have that knowledge beforehand? And and you know the university just helped mm. you, you know, kind of navigate onto like a certain career's path because of that. Or I mean, would you still be able to do that work? Well, there's yeah, there's there's definitely things on my course where I was just like, I mean, yeah, that's common sense. Yeah. Right? That's all right. Now there's certain things like, you know, I had to do like an accountancy module where I'm just like, okay, right? Yeah. Some of that I did <laughs> not. But I did do accounts for three and a half years. I did like credit yeah. control, purchase ledger and all sales ledger and all this stuff. It was so boring. I hated it hated it so i did know a lot of, but there were some things i didn't know right so there's definitely stuff that you i feel you know so it's just like yo 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 you can't take that right yeah. but yeah. then there's other stuff where i'm like oh, i'm fine if you take that because you know i never use it right we don't actually do it like that in the real no. world so take exactly that. clear some space in this hard drive yeah <laughs> and i would never have octavia butler because i learned about octavia butler in college uh, yeah that would be uh gotta pay my loans. rubbish yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't take her from me uh, oh. oh man like when you were making this what was okay yeah what did you envision being the biggest hurdle, the biggest challenge? And what actually was that biggest challenge? So going into it, I had a lot of people, you know, when I decided I was going to direct it, I was already scared. Like the night where I got the final 
uh, production head saying like, yes, we're completely comfortable with you directing this. I literally dropped to my knees in my office and my husband had to come over and hug me. I was sobbing. Like I was so terrified to do this. Um, and so I thought I was just going to muck it up the whole thing. I just, that was the fear going in. Um, mm. And then as soon as I got on the first day, 6 a.m., go to the studio and, you know, everyone's already starting to set things up and I'm seeing the sets come together. Um, the, the only thing, the only challenge that mattered once I was on set was we had one situation where, um, you know, like going in, we wanted as many black people as possible because of the, the subject matter. Yeah. I was like, I, I had had a South Asian um, friend. She, like I had like a, a theater reading of The Burden before we started the short film and she was directing it. And she had tried to come over for a rehearsal and tell my actors, okay, let's, let's practice the nigga scene. I'm like, are you deaf? The irony, like oh, I had an 87 year old black woman that just went and put her head down and then no one would talk to her or mm. listen to her. And she was mad. She had the nerve to be mad. Like she didn't understand why no one oh. was okay. And I'm like, we are literally doing a, a reading of the N word and how, if you're not. Oh, boy. So then on set, we had a situation where we had um, a white woman who was a part of the crew and she lied about her experience. And mm. at the end of the first day, figured out that every piece of work and job she had was trash and would not work. And my producer, you know, like the next day, you know, like I'm, I'm on set, you know, and I like show up and I'm like, hello everyone. And I see the producer, my DP and some other crew, like they're huddling. And I'm like, what's happening? And my producer's like, don't worry about it. Go talk to your actors and, you know, start your day. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and turns out they were having to replace her. And then when she got on set, they took her into a room and had to fire her. And she spent two hours while we were like setting up crying, crocodile tears. Oh, God. And like to get people's attention like sitting there like as they go by and oh. would not leave set no. that ended up being the biggest challenge was not necessarily any of the fears i thought but just managing the same like racist weirdness mm. that we're trying to talk about in the film i'm like mm. how dare you come onto a set with and she had read the script, she knew exactly you know the story we're telling, and then like yeah, so that was a fun day, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it and you know it's like the don't mess with my money. Like I'm very like <laughs> mm. like when they were like, well, we might have to you know do this and this and this to make up for the like seeing red, I'm like ah yeah mm. so. Were you able to get that replacement quick? Yes. Or? Thank okay. the Lord. Um, it was our sound person. Oh. So our sound. Um, and so there was this guy and he wasn't available when we were, you know, doing our interviews and they reached out to him again. And he was like, yeah, he was like, as long as you can give me a sound pack. And we were like, bet. And he was there within 45 minutes, carried out, it was delightful. He was the most wonderful person to have on set just like uh, oh man that is yeah. was that shay harris uh the the sound person is james, is james last name? oh james conover yes yes james, uh, uh, yeah you won't see the other person's name <laughs> <laughs> we were like, no, we're good. We couldn't use any of that sound, so. <laughs> like, uh, oh, boy. Yeah, you, you, you don't need those sort of headaches. That's not good at all. Boy. But when you have a, a crew that's like, this is my lane. This is my jam. This is what 
what I'm good at. Let me do my job. Everything works like a, a well-oiled machine. Because I didn't even realize until I saw her crying. It's like, what's happening? And then my, you know, then they let me in. I'm like, mm. let's, let me introduce you to James. And I'm like, okay, I'm going with it. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> but I think all of that is a testament to you, though. Right, because the fact that all of these people like pull together to fix this situation, right? They didn't want to put that burden on you, right? They 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 held it down. That says a lot because if they didn't give a fuck, they were just like, "This is just a paycheck. Oh, we don't care," right? That wouldn't have happened. That's why you have to be good to people mm -hmm. because. They will turn on you and, and and it will only be a paycheck. And there's no money that you can pay someone for their dignity. Um, no. So they could have been like, the sound is just going to be shit. And you're just going to, yeah, you'll find out yep. later. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Yo. Sometimes. Yeah. It sounds like it. <laughs> you know, everyone's challenges. That's what everyone has to deal with, right? Mm. Yeah, they came out with what was it, alligator tears? And I was like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> too soon, too soon. Uh, I kind of feel that your reaction to finding out that yeah, you're gonna be directing this film was probably the best reaction. Mm. Because I think when someone is overconfident, it usually leads to failure, right? So I think going in with a fear, that, that's not a bad thing yeah. because it pushes you to be excellent. Right. It pushes you to double check everything yes. to be like, OK, right. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Right. Because I've spoken to people that are just like, I wrote the draft in a couple of days and that was the only draft I wrote. It was great. I directed this film and it was great. And I'm just like, OK, OK. I'm glad you All right. Yeah. And it's just like. And you keep things respectful. There's, I'm just like, this is a platform for people to talk about their work, right? So even if I don't like it, we'll still talk about it, right? We'll still talk about it. You talk about what you do because just because I don't like it, someone will. Yes. But, but. I think it shows a lot. It shows a lot about you in the way you talk about something. You know Very what I mean? Curious. Ego, ego kills so much. <laughs> and I'm like, you, I feel like if you're not playing in art, if you lose your sense of imagination and whimsy, even in dark matters, like what, you know, we're discussing, mm. if you lose that, you lose, you have to be curious. Um, I mean, there was, there was one point on set. And I remember I was, you know, behind the screen and I'm like, you know, just really paying attention to the actor. And the first AC, my, my camera woman, she was like, oh, sorry. And she like was like, cut. And then she looked at me with fear in her eyes and she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know that's not my play. And I was like, this is my first film. You saw something because you have been on lots of sets <laughs> and you're saving the project. Please do not apologize. Thank you. Like. We had a moment and you just, everyone on set was kind of like, and, and that was, I mean, it was just like, there was no ego. I don't know yeah. how to, it just helps. And then it made it better. Yeah. I, I think that that's the thing, right? It, it's just like, look, when you've got people in the room with more experience, listen to those people. Yes. Right. Maybe you don't go with their final suggestion, but you listen to it, you ruminate on it and you'd be like, OK, mm -hmm. pros and cons of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But just to be like, nope, nope, nope. I, why have these people here then? Yeah. 
right? You you could get a whole load of college students if you want mm -hmm. people with no experience. Yes. Right? There's, and I, oh my One gosh. Minute. Like, I've worked at places. I remember what the, the cinema I worked at when I was at uni. I was, we were recruiting. And I was just like, I'm going to be involved with the recruitment process. I think this will be interesting. So I'm pulling out CVs and it look like these people with experience. I'm like, oh, these people would be great. And they're like, nope. And I'm like, wait, what? why wouldn't you want these people? And I'm like, they might come and take our jobs. And I'm just like, are you, are you crazy? Are you? And I'm just like, I, yeah, I want the sharpest motherfuckers in the room. Because I want to be pushed. I want to be challenged because it's going to make me better. Yes. Right? If, if I throw up a stupid ass idea, I want someone to be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Yes. About? You know what I mean? And then I'm be like, ah, fuck. You called yeah. me. Right. And it's going to stop me from throwing up stupid ideas. Right? It's going to make me have to put out my best shit to never wing it right, to come on point every time. Yes. And if you don't have other sharp people in that room, everything just goes down Quick. Hill. Just goes downhill. And you see it time and time again in industry, right? Mm -hmm. When there's mad competition, whoo, everything is just sharp yes. and firing. But yes. when you're the only player... The quality goes, oh my days, quality goes down. They say that's why uh, working with Al Pacino is like, e there is not an actor that you'll ever meet that says that working with him was crap because he bring, and he's not bringing it because he wants to look great. He's bringing it because he's trying to pull something out of his scene partner and they feel that. And it mm. makes them want to be better. And it's just like magic every time. Because he has that, just he just wants everybody yeah. to just bring their A game. Yeah. And that's what it should be. Right? That's what it should always be, that you're, you're there bringing those people. I, I spoke to a guy the other day. Um, oh, my days. What was homie's name? It was, can I try and find it? It was TJ something. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, uh. Do, 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 do. Uh, that was it. TJ, look, TJ Noel Sullivan, right? That That's homie's name. And he's got a film out called Midas. And it's it's a heist film. It's really sharp. And it's his feature directorial debut. The cast were great. Right. I thought the end was a little bit, you know, what I mean, I don't know if I bought the end, <laughs> but the film was was good. We were in the it. film was good. And talking to him about this film, he's just like, yo, everyone would support each other on set. Right. When there was a telephone scene, the other actors would be like, yo, I'll be on the other end of the call. I'll make it so it, you know, I mean, to get the yes. most out of that performance for the other guy. Right. They were helping each other like that. Right. And I'm just like, yeah, that like, why wouldn't you do that? Because you want everyone to be great because you're in this film, too. So why wouldn't you want the film you're in right? to be the best it could be? That's a weird insecurity that you want everything to look bad so that you can. I'm like, no hmm. one's going to even get to you because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, they've already turned off the film within the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there, there's some weird oh, things. Game. That ha well, also, it, it, one thing I find so weird, right? And you see it a lot with shorts and indie films, where you'll go to an actor's page and there is no mention of them. There is no mention. They'll put all the blockbusters there in, even if they're way to number two. Yes. They'll be like, I was in Mission Impossible. Yes. And they'll be like, for a second. Yes. You were there for a second. I but they'll be it. shouting about it. But yes. there'll be a short 
where they were the star and they won't talk about it. And I'm just like, have some fucking respect. Yes. Like yes. if you're in something, talk about it, right? Because maybe no one knows the director at this point, but no one knew anyone when mm -hmm. they first started. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Like no one knew Richard Linklater. Now he's huge. No one knew Spike, right? Lulu? No one knew Spike Lee. Lulu. Huge. No one knew Gina, right? Like yes. huge. So talk about these people, respect their work. See it, see that art, whether it's short, feature, whatever. There's a, you always see the spark, like you know. Mm. Yeah, I've always wondered that. I mean, shorts are just, I love them. I love them. Like I, I have started writing features and like at some point I, I think I'll do a feature. But for now, I just love, I love what you can accomplish. Like the challenge is mm. how much can you tell in such a short amount of time? Yes. It is a, it is an art form oh, to, to sure. pack it in. Pacing, you have to get so much right. There's no room, no time for error. Um, mm. yeah. But I, I think it's one of those things, right? Where... I think it, it, it's like when you see boxers or like um, MMA fighters and you've, you've seen that they've got a big amateur background, right? You usually see them and they make their pro debut and they're good, right? Because they've been able to perfect their game yes. in the amateurs and yes. the shorts, right? That's your amateur background, Right. That that's where you, you know, what I mean, you perfect those skills, yes. right? You sharpen all of everything up, right? That you kind of find your voice there. Yes. So the more that you you play around in that theater, I think the moment you then make that next step, boom. Mm -hmm. Because you look at um John Watts. I think it's John Watts. He directed Spider-Man, the Spider-Man films. I feel, I think it is John Watts, right? I believe he'd made one indie film before Marvel grabbed him for, but I imagine he must have made a lot of shorts, yeah. right? Because you then you make that feature, and because you you've been behind the camera, you've yes. done all those things so much, you've got all those reps that you can make such a statement in your feature, then people are like, yo, mm -hmm. fuck, let's mess with this dude, right? And I, I think that's the big thing with shorts, right? And, then, and if you can tell a story in such a short space of time and make it so concise and succinct, right? If you've got that skill set, yeah. No. You you should be able to do the same with a feature, right? You you should have those skills, right? You can tell that story, and I think that's the importance of it. You got your finger on the pulse. <laughs> that everyone listen, listen to him, because <laughs> yes, yes. Hmm. Uh... Do you have um, other genres you would like to play in? You know, um, it's funny because, you know, I did this and so everyone just automatically assumes I'm a sci-fi head. And I'm like, no, I I am very much, um, I don't know if it's a belligerent child or just stubborn or what, but I'm like, you can't put me in a box, never put me in a box. Like mm. I didn't even think I liked sci-fi until I found Octavia Butler because I never saw us in it yeah. and so it just yeah, yeah, yeah. and so um i have written some shorts that are still sci-fi or fantasy i just there's something about magic and whimsy for me mm. it's like i need that in order to to get the ideas that i you know want to like shake up like a crop yeah. but um my next short is like it's beasts of the southern wild Indie Ooh. film, you know, very. That film was so slept on. 
Oh, that film was so beautiful. Sick. Oh my god! It, so it, beautiful. It, it, was. Um, it feels like bomb. There's just like, and that's what my next film is. Is like, I was just like, I need bomb. I need like mm. something feeling that feels like honey. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just kind of, you know, making things. But I mean, the the first feature script I wrote is about um, a black woman who can write has a time machine. So. Ooh. It's it's always going to be there. <laughs> okay. Uh. I'm not completely out of it, but yeah, I I would never. You could never typecast me. I mean, it's like Lovecraft Country. Mm. I'm like most of Lovecraft Country, I was like, yeah, I'm not really into the horror genre, you know. And people are like, what? You have to be your side. <laughs> no. And then. Episode seven, I am came along, and I was like, "That's mm -hmm. that is my jam." So, whew. yeah, yeah, there are certain parts uh, that, that light me that, up. Yeah, that 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 definitely was good. That was everything was good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, I mean, I yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing what comes next. You. Definitely to see. Yeah, I have a pre-production meeting in two weeks. So, Ooh. I, I I thought the burden was a one and done. I was like, yeah, I have this one story, and then the pandemic hit, and I was like, well, actually, I have <laughs> a couple more things I think I can write, and and then I was like, but I'm so focused on the burden and just getting it out there and talking about it that I I didn't I, like I have other filmmaker friends that are at festivals and they're like, yeah, I just finished you know, wrapping up on my feature. And I'm like, but you're still in, in the sh <laughs> like, I don't under, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not good at that. Um, but I'm starting to like get to the point where I'm like, okay, you know, the burdens film journey is we're in the last couple of months. So. Right. Right. Now, you know, because you, you act as well. So what's the faults around career moving forward like what to focus because i imagine everything yeah. takes so much time and attention so i, I actually fired my agents ah! <laughs> i know i was like did i really mean to do that and my husband was like did you really mean to do that <laughs> <laughs> for as long as i i mean i think from the time i was four i was like i'm gonna be an actor and people mm. were you know, I, I, I majored in journalism, actually. I went into strategic marketing um, in school and did that. And everyone was like, oh, so no acting. I was like, no, I'm still going to move to LA and be an actress. And then this hit. And it literally, I was like, I think I really like directing. I think acting for as long as I did prepared me for the kind of director I want to be. Mm. And how I talk to actors, it's like I can... I love seeing like, oh, you're the kind of actor that needs this from your director. And you're the kind of actor that needs this from your director. Or yeah. like, you know, I, I would have directors and it was like, they sound like Charlie Brown characters. It was like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I'd be like, what are you, this doesn't make sense to, you know, like trying to get me to do a stunt a certain way. And like their AD having to step in and be like, Tish, you just have to run this way, turn your head, fall down. And I'd be like, oh, why was that so hard? You got to be able to communicate. And so I love that part. I love like, you know, knowing that certain, like, you know, uh, Sam, who was, you know, judge number three, you know, he was, you know, doing the part. And I was like, you're the angry black man trope. I want you to lean into that. And I could tell he was kind of like, okay, but not getting it. And I was like, Samuel L. Jackson, give me Samuel L. Jackson. And he was like, oh, but, and he, you know, <laughs> that, like, as soon as I was getting that kind of, like, yeah. play back and forth, I was like, oh, this is where I've always should have been. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I may put myself in, I don't know. Last night I watched uh, M. Night's latest Trap. Okay. And as soon as he came up on screen, I was like, why does he always put himself into the, in his, <laughs> he is not an actor. <laughs> Don't do I it. Know. I know. It was, but, it was amusing. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I thought, this is kind of based on a true story. Yeah. Well, what, so supposedly the FBI 
worked with local police enforcement and they invited a whole heap of like suspects to a convention center and they were like oh yeah there's this big nfl thing going on and you can win tickets to the super bowl so it was in december so it makes sense because the super bowl's in yes. february so it all makes sense right so you think yeah that would make sense but with trap i was a bit like all right you're inviting everyone to a music gig right and firstly you, you're not giving all of that information to the star. No. Because how the fuck would you know that none of them are the person? Yeah. And then the staff member is just telling some random person? <laughs> right? I was just like, yo. I, I was doing this a lot. I'm like, sci-fi, <laughs> you have to suspend a bit of your logic in order. Mm. I'm like, don't ask how the time machine came to be. Yeah. You just have to believe there's a time machine. This, I... I could never want, and my <laughs> husband loves that man in all of his films. He has never not liked any of them. <laughs> and so he was like, just stop. And I, and I, he just, I'd have to walk, just walk. It was still entertaining. Don't get it wrong. Yeah. I still had fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was. It, it was, close. it got real goofy. Yes, it got it got real goofy. Yeah, <laughs> there's also with the like the wife. I thought she would be in on it. Oh, I, I shouldn't ruin it. So. Uh, but it but it was just like that whole thing of be like, so why are you telling the police? Yeah, like huh? Like, and then it's all on it's very expensive the drink, right? Where it's just like, what if he doesn't drink it? Yeah. <laughs> then what happened? Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, uh, huh? <laughs> Bless him. Because you know what? Heinz <laughs> and Six Sense. I loved both of those films. I was like, yes. And then after that, I was like, what? What? Mm -hmm. What? What are we doing? Yeah. Although I, I didn't get Six Sense. Right, because oh. the thing was, I'm watching Six Sense, and I'm like, "Did you figure well, it everyone, out?" Yeah, because I'm like, everyone's ignoring him. So you are very perceptive. But I, but I just thought it was so like... clear, and I didn't <laughs> understand the whole like, "Oh my god, I'm just the like... twist." <laughs> you were the first person that I have ever had this conversation with. It was like, yeah, I totally got it from the beginning. <laughs> wow. What about science? I like science. Okay. I think science was good. I re I did really like science. The alien hand underneath the door got me. I remember oh. screaming in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. No. Didn't want any part Oil of that. hats, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> did you see The Crow? No. Yeah, don't. Okay. Don't. It's so bad. Oh, no. It's so bad. I mean, like, I know the director is pissed that people don't like it. <laughs> and it's just like, he's just like, why are you trying to compare it with the, the, the Brandon Lee one? Don't do that. And I'm like, I'm not comparing it to the Brandon Lee one, no. right? But the thing with that film was, and it wasn't a perfect film by any means, but I bought the relationship right and if the film the basis of the film is that this love is so powerful it brings you back from the dead i need to buy the love and i don't buy like there's a bit when she's um they you know they they're like oh what did you what did you like when you first saw me and um tk take FKA, FK, uh, twigs. <laughs> I, uh, right? She's like, um, oh, I saw there was an imperfect beauty in you or something like that. And I'm like, no, wait, you don't sit. You would get that from a conversation with someone, from getting to know someone. Yes. You don't look at someone and go, oh, I see. That's an imperfect. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Is that a snaggletooth? Like, like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, no, 
no <laughs> and then there was another goofy part when um like they they've run away and then all of this bit and he goes to hug her and she's like oh you stink and he's just like she's he's like oh yeah i'm gonna go have a shower and she's like wait before you do that and then they have sex and i'm like no oh, why would you want to have sex with someone that stinks no like, if you think stinks that's not, not how human beings talk yes exactly each other. we do not and, interact this way no and that was like if it was like yo you need a shower he's like i'm gonna have a shower and then she was like i'll join you fine but to bit the the other way it just made no sense and there was so much in the film that just made no sense it was crazy no crow it was crazy so yeah i i don't definitely avoid that <laughs> you're the expert you watch a lot oh yeah. Uh, my daughter yeah. is telling me that I have to go get ice cream with her pretty yes. soon. Oh, yes. what flavor? What flavor are you going to get? Uh, uh, circus, which is the, it's blue ice cream with gummy bears in it. I think it's, cotton candy. it's like cotton candy flavor. She says, uh, okay. and then strawberry on top of that. Mm. hundred degrees. This is mean, what we do. I'd say mango. I'd go mango. My friend would go mango. What do you think of mango? I mean, I wanted mango there. They don't have mango flavor. They don't have mango flavor, she said. Oh. oh she'd get that. <laughs> okay. Well, Tish, I will oh. let you go and um be a parent because Kevin, I will talk to you Rachel. anytime about films. You have Damn. Open a box. So here. <laughs> now every time I see anything, I'm going to be like, have you watched this yet? <laughs> Let's talk. Well, I really appreciate your time. It was, ah, it, it was so great having this conversation and being able to watch your film. So thank, thank you, you so very much, much for watching. Oh, and no worries. I hope oh. to see you soon. Yeah. How can people keep track of you? They can find me on Instagram. Um, my film's handle is uh, at the burden film, mm -hmm. and then I'm also I have just my my normal regular regular account. I'm at Love and Kiwi. Um, it's L U V A N D K I W I. And no, I'm not from New Zealand. I just really like the fruit. <laughs> As a kid, I'm weird. <laughs> awesome. Happy. Well, people, the links will be on the website. So make sure you go follow the film. Follow Tish, and you can watch The Burden from the 14th of September to the 22nd online via Sci-Fi London. So make sure you do that because it's funny as hell and it will make you think. And people, are you throwing the word around? Huh? Would you yeah, make right. it to the new world? Hmm? Hmm? Ask yourself that. All right, Tish, it's been a straight pleasure. Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to have another conversation about whatever you do next, because I'm on board, whatever it is. Thank you, Kevin. You take care. You too. All right. Bye.